I think that's funny because we, that that's kind of where we're at, right? In our headspace, we're like, well, we don't want the AI to do everything for us because then what are we doing, right? But well, at the I'm same- actually trying to rethink it, and I'm trying to stop myself from doing it and getting the AI to do it. Welcome to the Wired for Real Estate podcast, the show that's all about empowering agents with the latest tech, tools, and tactics to take your business to the next level. If you're a producing agent who's looking to boost your productivity and enhance your marketing effectiveness, you're in the right place. Join us as we explore the cutting edge strategies and insights that are shaping the real estate industry today. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, our expert guests and hosts will share valuable tips and practical advice to help you succeed. So sit back, tune in, and get ready to elevate your real estate game with the Wired for Real Estate podcast. Real estate agents need to be using ChatGTP for their business. Some realtors are excited. uh, Some brokers are scared. And why are they scared? Because they probably have no idea how to actually use it. They see everyone else use it and talk about it. Every podcast is talking about it. Every video is talking about it. But they do not understand what's going on. Yeah. And for that reason, today we're going to go over seven ways, seven prompts to use for chat GPT that will help your real estate business. Okay. So we were talking about prompts and seven prompts with a bonus at the end, but Ian and I kind of decided to figure this out on our own without using chat GPT. Cause I did suggest to Ian, why don't we just type this into chat GPT and find out what are the most ways it's used with realtors and what do you think Ian? i think that's funny because that that's kind of where we're at right in our headspace we're like well we don't want the ai to do everything for us because then what are we doing right but i'm actually trying to rethink it and i'm trying to stop myself from doing it and getting the ai to do it yes yeah and that that's that's what what is it the dichotomy is that the right word the between the two we're trying to figure out like does that make sense and I do agree. I think that moving forward, we should always consider ways to use this program, this AI, to enhance our lives. That's the point. That's right. the point. But not take over. Not take over. Uh, I heard, I was at a conference and I heard them say, I heard somebody say, when Photoshop came out in 1987, did it put artists out of business? No. It sure did not. So that's the same thing here. Just because people have access to something doesn't mean they're going to be good at it or better than a professional at it. And the professionals, if they leverage it right, then they should be able to move beyond their wildest expectations with it. So let's go ahead and get into the newsletters. Interesting you say that because the internet, when it first came out, realtors thought they were going to go out of business too. Oh my God. Well, they are. And Zillow, once Zillow came out, we all lost our jobs. (laughs) We're not out of business. Um, but we're going to talk about these seven prompts. So I'm going to read off the seven prompts that we thought we were going to do. We are going to do, but I also yeah. want to ask chat GPT what it would have suggested to us and see if we're like on the same page or not. So our list has newsletters, drip campaigns, blog posts, social media posts, um, listing descriptions, real estate agent bio and Google business profile. I'm not yes. sharing the bonus tip. So yeah. now if I go into chat GPT, what am I going to okay. ask? So I'm going to go ahead and share. The top seven ways a realtor oops, can use chat GPT. So let's see. It always decides to tell you that it's a language model. Yeah, it needs you to know. Yeah. Lead generate. What does that even mean? Lead generation. <laughs> ChatGPT can help realtors generate leads by providing automated response to, oh, okay. We were going to talk kind of about that. Schedule appointments? Interesting. Integrated with scheduling software. Mm. It's an integration. Property search. That's also something we didn't think about. Market analysis. We didn't think, we didn't actually think about any of these. None Uh, of these. That one, automated communication. Yeah. That's really interesting. This is the machine telling us what it thinks you should use it. One of the tips I find is if you talk to ChatGPT like a person, it's actually, my assistant laughs at me because she's like, why are you being so nice to it? And why are you talking to it like a person? Because it's actually a lot easier to use and for me to actually be able to communicate. And it's actually quite polite. When you're nice to it, it's nice back to you. It's kind of funny. I think it's great. I think that's, well, so you, you think about that. If you're writing a newsletter to a client, 
You want that to sound friendly or you want it to sound serious. Like you have an idea of how you want it to sound. And if you don't have an idea, think about that in your future. But it's the same thing with chat GPT. If you go in and you say, give me these same prompts, but make them sound formal, it'll change the language. So if you're having fun and it's casual, the language will be casual. That's exactly what you want. And sometimes though, like for me, how I use ChatGPT for newsletters is I have an idea of what I want in my newsletter, right? Like maybe I want to talk about a client event. I want to talk about the market. I want to talk about um, our team. Let's, let's say those three things. And okay. I'll kind of brain dump like point form kind of the things I want it to say. So the nice thing is I don't actually have to make it um, flow. Because I've got so the ideas, but I just don't want to write it. Let's do so, it. Tell me, tell me how you would do one for a newsletter. So I would say, okay, I'm going to talk about, uh, please write, chat GPT. So I, I write in, write me a newsletter, colon. And then I say, client event, dash. And then I talk about upcoming Easter egg hunt is going to be happening on April 1st from 10 to 12. We'd really like to see you, period. So it's very short. I know I want to say more, but I know ChatGPT is going to say more. <laughs> and then I say um, an update on wait, the wait. current. Do you say want to or wanna? Mm, I don't talk like wanna, but yeah. Ooh. See, I would say wanna. That's you, really bad. So if it's you, then you can put that, but I don't talk like that. So it'd be weird if I said that. <laughs> um, and then for the update on the market, I would just do a general saying of like, just so you know, the first quarter, the market, it was a slow start, but it's getting busier now. Spring market is in full force. Okay. So again, very lame, not much of a newsletter content. And then the third point was, oh, a butter team. So our team now comprises of myself, Julie as a stager, Christine as the client care. We're excited to serve you. Christine just started her new role from her marketing previous marketing role. So if you hit enter, it actually like, well then just generate like you're I, Yeah, I went through all this before I only put in the first point and yeah. it's giving me a page. So you can see, uh, you can see that it gives you a lot and you can say, okay, I only want this to be a paragraph. Yes. And then it'll rewrite it. Cause I don't want a whole page for each topic, but you see like, I didn't have to think too much. So it, it saves my brain space too, right? In terms yeah. of like thinking that out. Um, but that's like in terms of the newsletter world, it's if you're using newsletter for your clients, if you're using newsletters, maybe you're sending out monthly newsletters to your online leads. So you have them on pay-per-click and you've got them on drips, which we'll talk about in a second. But you also want to give them some generic information about the market, um, maybe some stuff about the community or moving to maybe you know these are people moving to to your city you can talk about that um yes. we're going to use this chat gpt for our newsletter for this podcast so we want to be able to make sure that like we're giving valuable content to agents so we're going to ask chat gpt what should we include in our podcast newsletter for people who are listening to us mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. solid that's solid yeah. um that's really cool so wiredpodcast.io if anybody's interested we'll put that up on the screen here so let's talk about drip campaigns a little bit so melody when you're thinking about this is anybody anybody when you're thinking about drip campaigns you want to you want to realize that most of these are going to be automated and depending on your CRM it may or may not have a uh, conversational element to it but you still need to plan out the drips. And for those of you that don't know what drips are, if you have a new client go into your con your client management uh, system, client managed CRM. Like follow up boss, chime, follow up boss, chime, any of those. Town, yes. Any any yeah. of the systems really. When you have a client that shows up in there, they might not be ready to buy right away, right? And so or sell or anything list like or anything like that. So we have these drip campaigns, which is basically an email or a text or uh, a prompt to call where it goes out every, let's say every day, every week, every month, and it just keeps them engaged. Some other realtors might call this nurtured. And a lot of us who've been in the business know this, but that still doesn't mean that everybody has this implemented. So that's huge. So this will be a great way 
Go ahead. They're also kind of maybe using the generic oh, yes. drip campaigns, right? So yes. Follow Boss, for example, has a library. Boomtown has a library that you can choose these drip campaigns that maybe worked for Ian in yes. Texas, but doesn't work for Melody in Canada. I'll tell you, in Canada, Beautiful. people do not like the excessive amount of the 10 days of pain. That, 10 days um, of pain. That is talked about. So you can personalize the drip. So what the beauty is, is you can still use the drip campaign and the templates. But what I would do is I would copy and paste the templated email that they're suggesting you use, throw it into ChatGPT and say, rewrite this to sound more casual or to um, add this or to add that. And you then you paste the the content and then it'll spit out a new version of that because drip campaigns are they're systematic in how they're done right there's a there's a yep. method behind they don't just randomly send out random five emails there is <laughs> so a cool. process in what you're trying to bring them through so instead of you trying and honestly you don't even have to use the templates you could just go to chat gpt and say hey i need a five-day drip campaign i don't even know if chat gpt know, knows what Drip campaign is for we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Because I, I think that if you write that in, just let ChatGPT do its thing, right? Did you say five page real estate buyer drip campaign? I don't know why I did that. I, I was just listening to what you said and I typed it. <laughs> you can, I'll you stop can hit, the generation. No, hit uh, stop generation. Page one, page two. Pages. They're actually small. Yeah. They're short. So maybe oh, that, like yeah because that's five days right yes yes so it's seven giving days you the text so for people who are not watching us on the live stream you can see um it says page well, I can't it's, I can't go as fast as it is page four home tours and offers and that's probably the subject line once yep. you have decided and identified a few homes so it's actually t giving you content for the body of the email Beautiful. That you can use right. So and yes. then the, the fifth page, which would be the fifth day, I wouldn't use conclusion and next step. So you can say to ChatGPT, instead, of, in the for the last page, can you rewrite a better subject line for the email, and then it will tell you a better line, right? Because who wants to see conclusion and next steps as a subject line for their email? They'd probably just be like, "That's so weird. I'm just going to delete that." Um, <laughs> I just want to see what it says. Uh, oh, conclusion. Oh, there you go. Congratulations. One step. I love that. One step close. You're one step closer to your, to your dream new, home. Yeah, your dream home. Mm -hmm. It is smart. It, it there is some very good, really good thing. I mean, ChatGPT also has better grammar and spelling than we do. So, will Sometimes. it make us more stupid? No, but it can make you smarter. <laughs> like it can. I think, I think it's important, and I think that's like the drip campaigns is something that. It depends on your business. I know that we don't use Google pay-per-click ads because we used to, but my model has changed and I am more so sphere and YouTube heavy, but guess yeah. what? They still need drips, right? So yes. I still want to reach out to my clients and we have what we call 33 touch where each client is put on a drip, but it's not for the same purpose. So a pay-per-click uh, one is, to, is it, the purpose is to build trust and convert. But for my sphere one, I'm my purpose is just to keep in touch. So I will just ask ChatGPT, what are three emails I can send to my sphere in the next year to keep in touch with them? Well, I just so, did a 33 touch. It's writing the whole thing out. Yeah. So there you go. You can use it for the content of your emails, and you can also use it for the actual structure of your drip campaign. It's, it's definitely, it's very insightful. And it's interesting because what did you type in there? I want to uh, give I'm, me the 33 touch um, nurture process or drip campaign or something like that. Oh, uh, marketing plan. I want to use know. that into my chat GPT. I'm curious if it'll come up with the same thing. Cause oh, I that's think a, it, that's really good. Yeah. Well, uh, so let's see. Maybe stop generating. What does it say? Here it is example of a 33 touch campaign for real estate agents. So let's look through example these. It's still going. I'm going to switch to yours. What did you say? <clears throat> Example of a 33 touch campaign for a real estate agents or real estate agents. So we, and we were talking about this earlier when we were having the discussion about newsletters. So in Canada, they don't say brokers and well, we depending do, on where they have a different meaning to it. 
Oh, right. It has a different broker. Uh, you don't yeah. mean real estate agents. So, and in the U S depending on where we are, what state we're in, it it's either real estate agent, realtor, or broker or broker associate, but they are all real estate agents. And in Canada, broker is like the, basically the manager in charge of that brokerage and you have a broker's license. It's different than a real estate license. So you, or people think of it as mortgage broker. Mortgage. So yeah. Is mine similar to yours or is it different? Good question. I wonder if you can. So let's it. see. So I've got, oh. I'll just come up to the top and show the first, uh, first 11. Intro so email, brought- market report, personalized note, helpful tips. So let's bring yours up. Personalized email, introducing yourself to the client, follow up with a phone call to discuss. That's different. Needs, a little bit different. Send a monthly newsletter with market updates and tips on home buying. Send a personalized ho- holiday card during the holiday. So it's a little bit different. There, it's almost like it's worded different, but it means the same thing. Because my number seven is holiday greetings. Send a holiday card. Oh, so it's like a different order. Right? <coughs> uh, order and flavor of words. Uh, yeah. I wonder if. Now it does like this account, unfortunately, is a new account because my old one, for some reason, wasn't going to work today. Um, but I know that it looks at your past history. That's huge. Right? Huge. The more and you it use knows. it. Yeah. The, it the more you use it, the more it knows you. And it is kind of weird because it does feel like the AI machines are taking over when they get to know <laughs> you to that extent. Because you don't even have to be so specific. Like, you don't even have to say real estate agents. Eventually, you just say, I need a 33 33- touch campaign and it knows well, you're a realtor. So just absolutely. Out that absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so moving to the next topic, like blog posts, same yes. idea. If it knows that you're a realtor and you just say, I need a blog post for today. You can say, I need the next week's worth of blog posts. That's actually or really good. Let's do that. A, maybe you have an idea. Maybe you do have an idea for a blog post, but you're like, I need them to write it in my tone. You can also, I'm okay. Once you hit this, I also want you to try um, to change the tone after it's completed. So, what Ian is doing, he's writing very specifically what are three blog posts for real estate agents to generate new client leads? So, the more specific you are, the better the AI can respond. Because you could also write, what are three blog posts for real estate agents? Question mark. And it will give you three posts, but he's being super specific make the tone casual so funny ian i told it to make it in the tone of melody wilson edmonton realtor and oh, really? it started off with wowie zowie i don't talk like that for the record <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where it thought i would talk like that but I thought that was funny so it's what do you want to read one of them yeah let's go with the second one why you should invest in real estate I like that. In this blog post, you can discuss the benefits of investing in real estate, such as building wealth and having a stable long-term investment. You can also provide some tips on how to get started with real estate investing, such as working with a knowledgeable real estate agent and conducting a thorough market research. So this is just telling you giving you the start, the idea of the blog post. And then you can actually <laughs> ask it to write the blog post too. So yeah, but I think it allows you, I like how you did this because it allows you to put your two cents in so you're not fully reliant on the AI. So it's right. telling you what to say, say and you have yep. knowledge as a realtor in your head. So then you can like basically answer those questions by saying, please write me a blog post on and then just answer the questions that just kind of prompted you on because it's basically you're asking ChatGPT for prompts. And then ChatGPT is giving you prompts and then you're answering and then it will plug out this beautiful blog post. And you can then say, like I've done it where it's like, please make sure you use keywords. Please make Mm. sure you use keywords are are best suited for Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Right. And then it will, because it actually knows what keywords are because it's literally a machine. Um, I spelled in Texas wrong. (laughs) Did you spell it wrong? Uh, I did. I was just. figured it out. Yeah. Look at that. So I added, I said, add keywords that are best suited for Austin, like to the same three prompts, right? So it's going to take those and throw in Austin, Texas. I should have said Austin, Texas real estate, but real estate's already in there, right? Why you should invest in real estate in Austin. So if you're saying these things out loud, uh, I'm sorry, if you're saying them in your blog posts, then when people are searching on Google or Yahoo or Bing or wherever, is Yahoo still a thing? 
There are people. There are people have Yahoo email addresses. Yahoo's okay? are Yahoo's. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. So they, yeah. People when you're searching mail. online, that kind of stuff is what comes up in the search results. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, it also applies to YouTube. So the more we say Austin, Texas, or Alberta, Canada, or real estate agent, when people are searching online, anytime videos show up there's a higher probability that our videos will show up based on the words that we're using. It's really interesting the way that works. So back yeah. to chat GPT. Look, Circle okay, C, so Steiner Ranch, it's giving neighborhoods. Boulder yeah, Creek, I, love it. So because it's being specific. So. Very specific. Um, so so let's change the tone. Well, we can save that for the next one. Let's go to social media posts. Yeah, yeah, what let's do, do social, social media posts. So social media posts is going to be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Now, if you're generating content where you kind of like multi-platform purposing it, mm. you can change the description so that it's more appropriate. So yes. I have my kids help me with my distribution. They take the content from Instagram and the write-up that we've come up with Instagram, copy and paste that write-up and say to ChatGPT, I would like you to create a blog post from this. I would like you to create a LinkedIn post for this. I would. Mm. So then what it does is it creates a description so, specific to that. So Melody, why do you have them do one that's specific to the platform? Can we elaborate or um, unpack that a little bit? So, I mean, I have done it where I just have everything the same, but I'm experimenting this year with, if I can talk specifically to the platform, it might actually perform better, right? It'll speak more to it. And really like LinkedIn, the same kind of post use on LinkedIn should not be used for Instagram. Like it, they have different tones and different sounds and kind of like we Going were talking back about. to the tone. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we should write a LinkedIn post about um, changes coming to the housing market. Let me share on your screens. There uh, changes coming to the housing market, uh, but the post has to be specific to LinkedIn. So one thing that's important is when you're on, when you're going from platform to platform, there are character requirements, right? So like, Maybe you can only have 200 words. It's That's not true. This is not true. But maybe you can only have 200 words on LinkedIn where you can have 500 words on Instagram, right? So I don't know the number of words, but I do know they're different. Twitter is really short. Where did it go? There we go. I did. I asked for LinkedIn and Twitter. So please write it. Oh, yeah. Twitter is going to be shorter. Housing market. So that's weird. This is really long. No. So LinkedIn right now, that I just I, when I went to the social media marketing world conference, they were focusing on LinkedIn and how it's changing. Long posts are what people want on LinkedIn today. And look, 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 it only has a handful of hashtags too. It doesn't give you a ton. It only gives you a handful. It's perfect. I just said, can you please do a Twitter one? Sure, here's a shorter version of that post that would work for Twitter. And so now it's doing the, I didn't know Twitter can be even this long, but now it's gone. They just increased it. They increased the yeah. number of character or a number of, yeah, characters. Yeah. Cool. That's perfect. That's a tweet. Add an image, done. Done. Gosh, that's so good. So what does it say? Constantly changing. It's important to stay up to date. Blah, blah, blah. Real estate professional is crucial. I like it. And the, the, using the word real estate professional, uh, what tone did you ask it to do? Can you turn this into a teenager tone or something like that? I didn't even say a tone. Okay. okay let so let's create a tone. What's a good one? Can you re... Write this oh. in the tone of Tom Ferry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. Who knows Tom Ferry? Tom Ferry has a big um, blueprint or whatever on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a bit much. Hey there, it's Tom Ferry. No, no, no. We can't be Tom no. Ferry. No. <laughs> no. Uh, let's say, I just want to stop this. Why can't it want to stop? Okay. No, no. Let's. We are not Tom Ferry. Just want it to sound like his tone. I apologize for the confusion earlier. Here's a rewritten version of the post and tone of Tom Ferry. Good. Hey there, it's time to talk about the latest changes in the housing market. As always, I'm not sure if this is how Tom sounds, but it does change the tone of what's happening here. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard him say ex the pandemic has accelerated the digital transformation of real estate. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, like the change in real estate is bananas. <laughs> yeah, bananas. <laughs> like, bananas. Please make love it. this in the tone. Okay, so I think to professionals. 
Yeah, I think this kind of um, gives us a, a really strong idea of how we can leverage this just for the different social media posts. And look, ChatGPT isn't the only tool out there. Later in, in some of our future episodes, we're going to go over the different applications, how they apply um, to you, why they're different from ChatGPT. But you can see how powerful this one is and why it's taken off. I think this is one of the fastest growing, most used uh, launches, software launches in the history of ever. It's right. Crazy. I mean, I we did have Jasper AI. It was yes. kind of expensive. And we'll talk yeah. about that in another episode. I think we'll battle out ChatGPT versus Jasper AI. But I yeah. am now using uh, ChatGPT. So that's a bit of a spoiler there. Um, <laughs> but another thing that people can use, because I mean, obviously, it's very much we've talked about a lot of marketing things. But you can also use it for listing descriptions. That's something that most agents do not like doing. I mean, I don't know anybody who likes doing listing descriptions. And I know that a lot of clients sometimes feel like, you know, you've got to get the listing description right. I mean, we all know that listing descriptions is not what actually sells the property. The photos are worth more than description. However, you still want it to sound good. So, well, the, the description helps with their, your search engine optimization because now you're putting it on what uh, anywhere from 100 to 300 to 500 websites with that same description. And if you don't write a good listing description, chances are you probably can't convey the value of the property very well. I used, well, I used to think that. Guys, do you guys have limits? We have a limit of 1,020 characters that we can use. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Time. We have we have limits. So in fact, See, that we should put make that. sense though. Like, why is there a limit on, I know they don't want it to be. To you know why I don't it. care? You know why I don't care? Why? Because I'll still create a video that'll be better yeah. than most other agents in my market. Almost every other agent in my market. Of course. And I, we, we can, you can feature everything on social, but it is yeah. annoying that you have this limitation. So I always let clients know, Hey, we only can use a thousand and twenty characters. That's why it might seem a little weird because some of these houses have so many features and it's oh, really yeah. hard to include everything to the point where you're almost like point forming everything. And I have noticed on chat GPT when I'm trying to use the listing descriptions, sometimes it can't actually include everything. And so it will kind of sometimes get rid of some stuff because it's trying to squeeze everything into a small format. So, you know, yeah. when you were saying that, I just had this epiphany with chat GPT. So not only can it help with the listing descriptions, but you know, you have, you can put a, a description on every picture in our MLS. Right. Oh, so you can say like, write me the titles for each or description for each photo of the 50 photos I have of the 50 photos I have. It's gonna yeah. assume that it's going to have different things. You know what I was also thinking of? People might actually like writing listing descriptions for whatever reason, but they just ramble on and on. So what they can do is they can say, please shorten this to 1,020 characters for yes. my listing description. Then you yes. write your whole long blurb and then it'll fit in. Because it's actually really annoying to try to go back and forth to see if it fits on your MLS or not. Like it's, yeah. it's so hard to like, okay, now what do I delete? Do I delete this word, this sentence? And you're like, oh, now I have too many characters open to me. Well, I, I really like, I actually really liked writing. Uh, I do like writing a lot. What I don't like is having to come up with a story for a boring three bed, two bath, every house in the neighborhood looks like this house that nobody's upgraded. It's been the same for 10 years and right. they want, you know, 50,000 more than it's worth. <laughs> like how, how do I do that? That's the hard one. Yes. Those are, and that's just, it's just like, it's hard to like do a video. Because yeah. you're not going to do feature shots of the old dated kitchen that really needs some work or needs to be replaced or the shingles that are gone. Like you're not going to do close-ups of that. Like marketing a sexy luxury home is uh -huh. always so much easier than marketing a home that isn't the e – like because really, what do you market it for? So the same thing as the write-up. So you could actually – I wonder if we should try this. I was um, going to do the same. I was going to go get a listing description. Well, I was so, just going to say, how do I write a listing description? For well, let me just find, yeah, let me just find a house real quick house. while you're doing that. So I'll pull it up. now. Oh, it's, it's giving me advice. Writing a okay. list, listing description for a small house that may be considered boring can be a challenge, but there are a few things you can do to make it more appealing. Here are some tips to help you get started. 
One, highlight unique features. While the house may be small, it's possible that it has some unique features that stands out. For example, it might have a beautiful garden or a cozy fireplace. Uh, focus on location. Oh, my gosh. Emphasize functionality. Use descriptive language. So even mm -hmm. if your house is small and unassuming, you may still make it sound appealing by using descriptive language. Well, I'm going to show you Don't oversell. Ours. says don't oversell. While mm. you want to make the house sound appealing, it's important not to oversell it. Be honest in the property's strengths and weaknesses. And don't make promises you can't keep. So now it's giving you an example. Cozy yeah. and charming, this small house is perfect for those looking for a low-maintenance lifestyle. <laughs> the well-designed layout maximizes the available square footage, creating functional spaces that feel opening, open and inviting. With a beautiful garden and cozy fireplace, this home is the perfect retreat from the hustle and bustle of city life. Located in a quiet neighborhood just minutes from popular restaurants and shops, this property is a true gem. I mean, it might be true, but it also might not be. I was going to say, how do they know it's a quiet neighborhood? Like, if it actually knows that, there's, that's a little too far, right? You, if you, get you, the neighborhood you, name just put, you can write in the address it knows. I was going to say, I was going to say, if, if it yeah. could take like a, a sample of the houses around it or the descriptions of the houses within a certain radius... Like we put in an address of a house mm -hmm. and it knew it was a luxury home. We didn't yeah. tell it it was a luxury home, but I yeah. think it knew the area that it was in, which is all luxury. Um, funny thing is, it's like, I think we, when my assistant first tried it, she just typed in the address and then yeah. it didn't do anything, but it does know what area that property is. And you can be from, you can add, like you said, you like writing, so so you can write up the whole thing or not at all. So the question I would have is, is it, and this is, this is way kind of like a little deeper than the, the normal topic, but it's a good conversation for people to think through this. If, if it's like, is it taking from the original listing or something else that existed on the internet before I, we're listing it? Maybe. Because that, also, that would make logical sense. Too. I mean, okay. So an example is my last listing we used this for. It was a brand new house. It had never yeah. been listed before. Yeah. So it wouldn't have pulled any of that information out. It, in my get brain, I'm guessing it used Google Maps yeah. and knew the location of it. Um, but in a, in a situation where it's an older property and it has maybe been listed a few times, mm. then maybe it is pulling from that. Um, but you don't ever want to use someone else's listing description. So you, right. I think, again... You plug it out, you look at it and make sure it has your flavor. We like to always start our listing descriptions with live in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Our, our thing that we always do. So we yeah. always add that afterwards. I don't even bother telling it. I mean, I'm sure I could say to chat GPT, just so you know, <laughs> we always start off by listing descriptions with the words live in neighborhood. Or if you say it write it like Melody, neighborhood. it should start doing that over time. Well, Wowie zowie is what it's going to keep pushing No, nope, because yeah, you haven't used it a whole lot or something, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's so but. funny. Well, I had copied a listing description that I had seen, and I'm just going to post it in here real quick. I'm going to say rewrite. Re so you're thing. rewriting a listing description? Yeah. In... This can just, get kind of sketchy because I know that there's a big thing with realtors using other people's photos. Obviously, you should not be doing that. Um, but don't please use uh, the other person's listing description. But if yeah. you just, what Ian's doing, is you copying and pasting someone else's or are you copying your own? I'm copying and pasting. I just pulled up a random house. Okay, so I'm copying and pasting. I just want to see the language change. Right. Okay. So someone wrote this. I'm assuming. I don't know if an AI wrote this, but. Oh my God, check out this amazing crib. Why does it say OMG? Because I, I said write it in teenager. Because you oh. gotta think about who your who your clientele is. Write it in teen. When is a teenager tone ever appropriate for a listing? I mean, like it's appropriate in terms of you know attention. what? It's attention. You it is that's all it is, right? Is remember, do you remember there was a house them. where people were putting they were like they had a a, a blow-up dinosaur in the listing? Yeah, do you remember, remember that? that? That's what I mean. I Everybody know. remembers that. But I don't remember the listing. I just remember the blow up dinosaur. Right. But if you go and Google it, you're going to type blow up dinosaur in listing. And then you're going <laughs> to have, like, that's what you're going to have. I'm not getting a blow up dinosaur just in case any of my clients are listening to this. Um, yeah. But you, you know what? Also, but, I, my kids but, and I were talking about Michael Jordan's house not selling. I love this. The third third bedroom, bedroom is a total vibe. I, I, that's how I talk a lot. <laughs> it you is a total like vibe. Huh? 
See, I don't know. I have a teenager, and I don't know if he would agree that this is teenager language. Maybe this is what ChatGPT thinks a teenager sounds like. Sure, sure. Oh, but do you think they're perfect for chilling and grilling? My teenager does not talk like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so <laughs> I will say this. I will say that my language will adjust based on the language my client uses if necessary. So if it's a somber moment, I'm not going to be all, hey, how's it going? Are you, you know, I, like, you're not going to do that. Right. I, so not just my energy, but the language. The language has to change. If you're speaking to an executive, it's a very different conversation than if you're speaking to somebody who's a newlywed, they're 20 years old and they just want to buy, or 21 years old and they just want to buy their first house. You know, it's just very right. different. So I do adjust my language that way. Um, I don't necessarily make any assumptions, but I do think I start off at a lower uh Give me a word. Tone? Tone, energy level? Yeah, not energy level. Um, lower assumption of vernacular is how I'll oh, so say more it. More casual than over. Yeah, but casual is the word. Right. I'm looking. Yeah. I, yeah, I start off more casual because that's just my personality. But I have the ability to elevate if needed. Well, and sometimes realtors, when they're younger, to be more like I know when I first started a long time ago. I looked even younger than I am. And so yes. I always wore like a business suit and yes. I don't ever wear that now, but I wanted to look more professional. So I had to like up the game. So we're talking about this in language form. Yes. And I mean, you're not going to talk like someone in very formal language either. So I think ChatGPT, I haven't noticed it doing it. It can, you can ask it to formalize, but it doesn't need to. Here's do something that's really interesting. And we're just going to talk. I don't want to pull it up just yet. But imagine if you're speaking to someone who, where English is a second language, hmm. the formality might be necessary in the listing yeah. descriptions. So I if you know it's a neighborhood that's heavy, heavily concentrated in a certain cultural type, while we can't say that, the description could have that inflection. I don't know. So I work with people who have English as a second language. And honestly, the more formal, it's not actually helpful. Simple well, maybe not language, formal, but just simple and clean and easy to understand. Because yeah. actually, the more formal you get, the more complicated. Is in the English language is so confusing. Very much so. so. I think simple language. Um, I, I, this actually is interesting because we're talking a lot about who do we work with as clients. Yep. And our next topic that we were talking about using ChatGPT for is your real estate agent bio. Mm. And so when you're writing your bio, I really think that you should be writing it to who you want to be addressing. Who is your ideal client? Not yes. who is Melody and why should everyone know how amazing I am? But no, I'm thinking about who my ideal client is, what they want to know and what would be important to them and write my bio addressing that because i think that's more yeah. effective than just I agree right i agree wholeheartedly let's do it let's pull one up pull a bio like, let's create one bio. no no no. we're going to create one so give it a couple prompts about yourself so obviously you're a canadian real estate agent my target audience is young families i think it's bad grammar our young families or whatever Yes, <laughs> young families looking to move up from their current home. Okay. I'm Edmonton, Alberta, and I need you to write me a bio for realtor.ca. That's our thing. Okay. I am a tech savvy agent, work hard for my clients. Love it. Um, Top producer. Um, I do not like that. Family first. It'll change it that word. It'll change it. And I am a top producer, but please do not use that <laughs> word. Please. <laughs> I do not like uh, promoting myself <laughs> and, my, and ego. There. Agreed. No, no, no. 100%. Ahead. You know, so, whenever you do that, that's just, that's a more of a conversation for other agents. So they, they know like people, I just, it, it kills me when, when agents, they almost discount you when they don't understand that your level of production is very good. Right. right? But I don't it, like saying that to my clients. I'm a top producing that. agent. Like don't even No, get me no, no, no. Because it's so generic. Far. It doesn't, it, yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's read this for people who are not watching our stream. 
Hello and welcome to my profile as a real estate agent who's passionate about helping young families move up from their current homes. I'm committed to providing the best possible service to my clients. One of my top priorities is staying up to date with the latest technology and using it to streamline the buying and selling process for my clients. I like that. From virtual tours to yeah. online listings, I'm always looking for new and innovative ways to make the process as smooth and stress-free as possible. But beyond technology, what really drives me is my commitment to putting my family, clients and their families first. I understand that buying or selling a home can be emotional and complex process, and I'm here to support my clients every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy, sell, or simply explore your options, I'm here to help. So if you're a young family looking to move in Edmond make a move in Edmonton, let's chat and see how we can work together to achieve your goals. Thank you for considering me as your real estate. So I don't mind. I probably massage it a little bit. A little bit. But it was not bad. No. Didn't use top producing because I asked it not to. Right. <laughs> right. I'm but trying to see like if there's it. any I'm trying to see if it used that like changed the language for top prior, top producing. Like um I, I'm not seeing anything that talks about velocity of uh, homes sold or like anything how many like homes that. Sold? Yeah, it doesn't say anything like that. It just Incorporate, says incorporate. Um, but I sell many homes without saying it. Without saying top producer, <laughs> revised. Absolutely. Group. Here's a revised bio that incorporates your high sales volume without explicitly saying stating it. I love okay, it. So let's see if it's. Because so far, it's still the same. Yep. I think the way it's doing it is saying when it says, as a family first agent, I understand the importance of finding the perfect home for your family's unique needs. That's why I, like I make it my mission to provide personalized, oh, what is it? Personalized service to each and every one of my clients. Like maybe that's dating like how- Well, no, it's right here. It says, uh, I've helped many families. So what it's- it, uh, Oh, and also with a proven track record. Track of record, yeah. I've helped many families find their dream home. Yeah. Huh. To me, that's fine. I don't, I mean, you're going to attract your tribe, right? right? And people will see whether that's, you can kind of see experience too beyond the marketing. I think, I think a lot of clients can see that. And again, that's a whole nother topic where yeah. it's sales and marketing and marketing is such a highly valued thing in the space right now. That's what we're talking about. It is sales is such a huge part. You can do all the marketing in the world, but if you're not a good salesperson, you're not going to, you're not going to ever do the deals that you want to do. Do you think uh, it's saying thank you for considering me as your real estate agent? And it's looking at it as kind of the tone that you asked at the question, because that's a really nice way to say it. Well, and I said real estate agent bio. Like, I mean, if this was supposed to be for Instagram, I'll clearly it's way too long. Yeah, it so is. How would this look as an Instagram bio? Because Instagram bios are so small. They're very short. Oh, nice. even had emojis. Nice. <laughs> and get the emojis in there. Oh, my it's, goodness. <laughs> it's putting emojis in and... Oh, this is funny. Proven track record of success without the ego. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That, that oh, is fantastic. Funny. So when I said in teenager, I actually meant with emojis and I just, I couldn't articulate it at the moment. Um, oh, I see. Mentally I, articulate that's, it. That's kind of cool. Hey, like it's, it got, it's got Edmonton, Alberta. It has a little Canada flag yep. after it. It's got yep. tech savvy agent. I really like that. That's actually cool. Maybe I'll have to use it. I um, like it. But okay, let's let's and the emojis into, match your uh, melanin. I love it. <laughs> let, let's hop into the next one, the seventh okay. one, which is Google Business Profile. Yeah, quite so similar. It is very similar. So I could say, "How do you write this for oh. Google Business so let's Profile?" Go ahead and check up. Certainly, here's a version. There it goes. Now it's gonna rewrite it for the Google business profile. And honestly, half the time it's usually pretty good. And I just you know, put it while up. While we're talking about that, I'm curious how many agents here or how many people watching do not have a business profile. If you do great, do this. If you don't let us know in the comments, because the more we see, if we see a bunch of people that need to create a Google business profile, we'll make that a priority episode because I think that is crucial for your business. And I think that, a lot of agents have a profile set up. When mm. I say set up, I say it very loosely because yeah. they know they need to get Google reviews. Yes. So they have enough where there's Google reviews and I'm guilty of this too. 
I literally just had a profile set up for my reviews. Yeah. But I wasn't doing all of the things that we were talking. You just kind of alluded to setting up your business profile. There's so many things that yeah. you should be doing that is all free. Yeah. Um, so, and then this, this, uh, this bio, Google business profile bio could also be used as an update on Google. Like, as oh, a yeah. Post, right. Yeah. Say, yeah. Hey, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. Blah. Um, right. So I don't know. Well, what so, and this is, a, this is also another uh, full episode, but you can take those Google or anything that you have as a blog post or a newsletter, and you can post that on your Google profile. Yeah. Huge. 100%. Repurposing content is massive, yeah. right? And I think ChatGPT takes that to a whole nother level. Yep. I think it also takes the ability to maximize your time, whether it be yourself or your assistant or a team member to utilize ChatGPT. It's going to save you so much time and let you be more productive and maybe even be more creative. I mean, I love the fact that I can have it working on the side while I'm like multitasking and doing something else, right? Yeah. You're asking it to write a listing description. You've done what you need to do, let it do its thing. And then you can kind of quickly work on something else. Maybe you want to answer a quick text or something. It's literally going to be faster than asking your assistant to do it because nobody, the machine thinks way faster. And then your assistant can actually leverage their time by doing something else too, right? So. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, well, so, so you can, you can extend that a little bit too. So let's say you do have an assistant and they have idle hands. They can go like, for whatever reason, you shouldn't really have that. But if that happens, they can go and just create a bunch of front loaded things that you'll need to use anyway. So, um, well, now we're kind of like creeping into the bonus section. I I know, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which I suppose we're technically almost there, right? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't trying to say it, but uh yeah, I think like, both well, of us are trying go to avoid it. The, literally going that direction, that conversation. For the people that have stayed all the way have stayed here this long, first off, what do you think? Do you think this is good information? Hopefully, hopefully this is something that you can use, but we have a bonus one that I think is almost like game changing information mm -hmm. almost game changing and that one we're going to focus we're going to talk about content planning and i want to spend some time on that because what it does is you have this you have this powerful tool and you know how to use this powerful tool but now how can you turn that tool into something that builds almost an infinite supply of future content Right. Yes. And so this is the part where I think a lot of agents are going, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, it can write my listing descriptions. It can yeah. write my um, YouTube descriptions. It can do all these things, but what are you talking about it planning? Uh, and I think that's a like massive game changer because again, the more prompts you give it, the more specific you give it, I think the more reflective of you, it's going to sound. So I think a big part of this too is you really know, need to know who your ideal client is and what your Huge. voice is. If you don't know what your voice is and you're, because realtors, we're notorious for, I want to help everybody. Okay. I know you want to help everybody, but you need to target in on who your ideal client is because reality is, is if you had the choice and you had to only choose this one person out of the 50, who mm. are you going to choose? Right. right. And I think that's, that's where it's a, I mean, I'm almost going to getting into coaching mode here, <laughs> but like, that's what I do is I want to make sure you know who your ideal client is. And I also want to make sure you know who you are, because if you don't know who you are, it's going to be super weird. Your marketing messaging is going to be weird. ChatGPT is not going to know what you sound like. And then you'll become ChatGPT because ChatGPT knows what they sound like. Yeah. They, they know what their voice is, but you don't know what your voice is. And that's how you can define the difference. So for example, if we want to churn out some content for, what are we going to do? Instagram? Or no, let's do YouTube. No, let's um, do YouTube. Yeah. Let's do YouTube. Let's say I need four videos this month. Uh, and my channel focuses on families relocating to Austin, Texas. That's as you don't need to go that specific, but that's pretty generic. Like you're addressing your target market, which is families. You're target. You're also targeting relocation, right? And I know in the states you cannot um, talk about families. It's really interesting because 
Yeah, we, it is. I don't it know is. why we don't have that restriction. It's funny. But you can you can also just re- massage it later, right? And yeah. have a budget of. Uh, so in in Austin, if we if we, I would say, two million is. Oh, you're getting really specific. Yeah. Great. So you can you can stop it at Texas and just plug it in that way, or you can get even more specific, like what Ian's doing, and writing who works in the tech sector and have a budget of $2 million and have a military service. Like he's getting really granular, which YouTube does like. So now it's pumping out four topics and then it's kind of giving ideas. So you don't have to think anymore, which videos should I produce? What am I going to film? Right? Yeah. Um, Look at that. What I like about this- schools for families yeah. relocating to Austin. So the, here's the thing I would like you to do after this is done posting it. Sure. Say, tell it that, can you please write out the script for topic number one? And then. Every time you say please little... write, I'm writing please. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. You know what? It's just easier. If you, so it's easier for you to talk to a thing like it's a, like a person. It's, it's, that's the whole point is talk to yeah. chat GPT like it is a person. Yeah. Um, and so now it, see, it literally is telling you opening shot of a military family walking down a suburban street in Austin with moving truck and boxes in the back. Like it's being so specific. Very you don't even specific. have to do any planning. You just now have to implement what it's and, telling you to do. And it's pulling up iconic places. If you're driving down I-35, you'll pass Dell Children's Medical Center. You'll pass Mueller, right? If you, if you are moving to Austin, Mueller is a congregation place. It's a live, work, play area. Everyone goes there at some point in their tenure here. Uh, It's just, it's a cool spot to be. And so because of that, it's a hot spot. And so in the YouTube video, when you talk about it, a lot of people are searching for it. And so YouTube sees this, Google sees this. Your clients will be like, oh yeah, I've heard of of Mueller. If they know anything, if they've done any research, they've heard of it. So it's really cool. Look, look, look. This is my favorite right here. That, that is clutch and yes is I use clutch. people who are listening and they can, they're not watching yes, on video what you. are you what is clutch right now okay <laughs> what's clutch it's really cool it's a vibe it's just it's, <laughs> it's really neat it's really neat i don't know i don't know what the origin is no, but i heard uh, uh well, what does it some... say is what i'm saying not what is clutch oh sorry what so, is, yeah yeah what is so, what you highlighted saying <laughs> so the phrase is it, it's talking about B-roll. For those of you who don't know what B-roll is, B-roll is just, um, you know, some ancillary video that's playing while you're hearing words talking or just something that's playing, but it's not part of the main message. It's just kind of extra or to support the main message. So it says, closing shot of the military family waving goodbye to the camera. So as you're going through and you're doing all these things and you're narrating and you're saying, no matter which neighborhood you choose, Austin offers plenty of great options for military families. As you're saying that, it's telling you in the YouTube video to have some B-roll, not you, but a military family (laughs) waving in the background. That is funny. That's funny. It's so specific though, because it's literally writing everything out for you. Now you can now say, please write me a title to use for the YouTube video. Please write me a description. And it literally pumps out everything you need. And like, you have no more excuses, really. let's, Let's do it. So the current title that it's giving, which seems like it might work pretty well on YouTube, but that I don't know if it's a scroll stopper, top neighborhoods for military families moving to Austin. It's not really scroll stopper, but it's a great search term, right? So and now let's take this title. Not necessarily scroll stopper. Your thumbnail is a scroll stopper. So you can actually ask ChatGPT, what should I make my thumbnail for this video look like? And then it can give you the, the stuff and then you can go onto Canva or whatever and start pumping that out, right? Um, rewrite 10 versions of the title. See, high emotion words. For me, I don't need the high emotion words. I want to make sure it's fi- like findable. So I want to make sure it's keyword and easy for people to find on YouTube. It is. So it still has relocation, top neighborhoods, military families, and moving to Austin. It has all of those. But thrilling, I don't know. Thrilling is kind of weird. Um, yeah. Exciting a new beginning. adventures. Eh. Eh. Unforgettable. Unforgettable move. I like that word. I don't like the way they used it, the, the, the positioning of the word in the sentence. I just think that 
when it comes to YouTube, that's a whole nother topic of how we it come is, up with it titles. Is, it is. It's not yeah. just ChatGPT. You're right. Um, well, but so it's, it's interesting because remember when we were first talking about, this is our first episode. When we were yeah. first talking about what do we name our podcast and you were pumping out ideas. I'm like, why don't we just ask ChatGPT? <laughs> and guess what? Wired for Real Estate podcast came from ChatGPT, even the tagline, empowering agents with tech tools and tactics. That was ChatGPT. Yeah. Us going back and forth because... We put it, in it, a lot of stuff and it ended up getting shorter and turning into that. It didn't start yeah. with that. We also wanted double meanings, remember? And mm -hmm. so we gave it, we said, we want titles that potentially have double meaning. And then it mm. gave us a bunch of those. So it's... the You still need to be smart, right? Like people worry about well, I don't want it to sound like, for example, that YouTube script that we just came up with. Yeah. You live in, you live in Austin. You know yep. what maybe it's missing or maybe how to change it to sound more the way you want it to sound. But the great yeah. thing is it's so much easier to edit than it is to come up with the idea from scratch. Very, very That's good point. What's important. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. These, these sound like, um, like an after school show episode. <laughs> um, you did say highly emotional so it is trying to accomplish that. i know maybe i should you have can, said like fear evoking or something because we, we, we should share with the audience you can get into analysis process with chat gpt too because we kept asking it to massage and massage and massage the names and we're like okay this is not getting any better <laughs> like we probably should stop because it can only do so much really yeah I think I think this has been a very I hope this has been a very, very good conversation for people that maybe have recently discovered, have not yet discovered or just want some some increased potential with the application. We went over a lot of things that will apply to real estate agents and it doesn't really matter where you are. You, you can be in Africa. If you're a real estate agent, a lot of these can still will still apply. I'm assuming. Right. Do they have yeah. newsletters in Africa? Yeah, they have newsletters. <laughs> newsletters everywhere Ian. i know I, I they should. well that's the thing start. so i was just in uh sorry this is kind of like a sidebar but i was just in el paso uh yesterday and they don't a lot of this stuff they don't use it yet it's like because you didn't have to know it so there are right. you know there There's are delays anywhere and everywhere that are on the spectrum right in the real estate right. world you've got people who've been in the business forever yeah and are still like what is instagram do i have to do that I mean, I'm a second generation realtor. My dad okay. did not like Instagram. I think if he yeah. not wanted to have to do it, he wouldn't do it. I mean, he started off in the business over 30 years ago and sales was super important, not marketing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? So it's just like this, ChatGPT, it's like a spectrum. Everyone, yeah. for the most part, everyone's heard of it. There are still some people who have not heard of ChatGPT, um, but definitely they've heard of it. And I think that kind of maybe ties into what, I would like the listeners to know is yeah. we're starting this podcast because we want to talk about all the tech that's out there. There's so much tech in this real estate space. And we just, we're both kind of like tech nerds. So that's kind nerds. Of why we want to start talking it. about it. We use it in our businesses, right? Yes. Uh, we're both elite agents with real. And so we wanted to make sure that we shared this information with people, but also we talked about the tagline because we want people to implement what they're learning from this. We don't want you to just listen to this. If you're still here, you yeah. have been here a long time. Yeah. Don't just have listen to it and then just go on with your day and kind of forget so, it. So how can right. they how can they get started using it if they haven't already? So pro tip, it's not chatgpt.com. It is open or sorry, chat.openai.com. Go there. Sign up for a free account. It's completely free. If you want to pay, I would just wait till later. Just get the free one. All you got to do is click sign up. You put in your email address. Just use Google and just log in with your Google so you don't have to forget the password. And then just start playing. Now, it sometimes is going to be busy, especially I find at like lunch hours. It gets quite yeah. busy on the oh, free yeah. version. So you'll have to try again to be able to make sure you can get in there. But once you get in there, just start playing with it. And I think we had an idea. Ian, what was our idea of what we want people to try and do from listening to this podcast? That's a good question. I think, um, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I remember. Okay. So 
whether you have never done it or you yep. have it and you haven't used it or used it all the time, go into chat GBT and right. ask it to write you a response or say to it, I would like to write a post to Ian or Melody or both mm. of us to post on our LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, and then it'll spit out something. And then I want you to copy and paste that onto our Facebook wall, onto our LinkedIn, tag us so we can see that you've actually implemented this. Simple. Oh, that's good. That's good. And uh, what, do we, what do we have to say to everybody? Don't, and remember, don't let indecision be the decision. Indecision. It's very true. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching. I hope you, uh, you go out there and crush it. Is that a, See you next is that time. A vibe? And see you next time. <laughs>